Achasveros and Haman attend Queen Esther's party. She's still fasting, so she doesn't eat anything. And she says she's not feeling well, so she doesn't want to eat anything. At this party, she goes out her way to be really nice to Haman, giving him as much attention as she gives Achashverosh. Again, Achashverosh is very uncomfortable with this. And he's very upset that um, Queen Esther invited Haman along to their private party. But again, she sends him that message. And look, you gave him so much power. I had to invite him. I, I would have been insulted or whatever. And he's equal to you practically. Actually, at that party, Ahasuerus practically ignored Haman and only spoke to Queen Esther. At least he tried to, but she wouldn't eat. So Haman and Ahasuerus ate. And again, he tells the Queen Esther, What do you want? Up to half the kingdom? And it shall be yours. What was he not letting her have? The, um, you, uh, and the base. And Queen Esther feels, uh -uh, this is not the right time to tell Achashverosh that she wants to save the Jewish people. And also he was very drunk. And when he was very drunk, you, he was unpredictable. You didn't know, is he going to be kind and nice? Or is he going to be angry? And frustrated and not want to help and so she tells him up to uh, uh, she tells him don't, don't keep doing that because it disrupts the video okay when I'm videoing that on the screen doesn't disturb it so don't do it so he tells her she tells him tomorrow I will reveal what I really want and not only that I'll tell you what nation I'm from all these years I'm married to you I think it was 11 years if I'm not mistaken You've been wanting to know what my origin is? I'll let you know tomorrow. And Achashverosh leaves, and Haman leaves. And as Haman leaves, he dafka goes past Mordechai. And what does he find that Mordechai is sitting and learning with? With who? Can you guess? Okay. The kids. And mom, Mordechai knew that the strength of the Jewish people, the way to save the Jewish people, is through the oh, that was children. This is the time that he takes um, the yes, Kids, I told you wrong Bobby, in the past. I'm Bobby sorry. I'm eating at, this, <laughs> at this point, Haman flies into a rage. No, this is the power he, gets, he takes kids and he Yes, them and them. he gets so angry and he throws a whole group of children into, I don't know exactly, Please. into prison and he get, decides get, he's going to get, kill them even before he kills get, get, Mordechai. And he get, is boiling with get, anger get, because Mordechai get, will not bow down to him. And he feels, no, Queen no, Esther didn't honor get, anyone get, other than me. Get, I am second to the king. Maybe she even likes me and wants to marry me instead of the king. And, and he gets really, really angry. And children, here we learn something from Haman, kids. Haman, in order to validate himself, in order to feel good about himself, he needed the whole world to bow down to him. Um, children, this is a mistake. We don't need others to make us feel that we are worth something. We need to feel good about ourselves from inside ourselves, not because others <laughs> bow down to us, not because... Yeah. Okay, not... Um, Kayla, not, not, not because others bow down to us, not because others give us a tap on our shoulder. A good, healthy self-esteem comes from doing the right thing and from, from knowing that you're doing what Hashem wants from you, listening to your daddy and your mommy, and not because we need to be the most popular child in school and all that. Anyway, in the end, Haman's, um, Haman's desire for the whole world to bow down to him, in particular Mordechai, was his downfall. That's what destroyed him. He comes home enraged. And he turns to his wife Zeresh and to all the people who loved him. And he tells them the king didn't make anyone more important than me. I'm the most important, and yet Mordechai was still, and when Queen Esther makes a party, who does she invite? No one else other than the king and me. And she say, he says, I, I can't wait till the 13th of Adar to kill Mordechai. I want to plan to kill him now. And his wife, Zeresh, tells him, you know what? Make a tree, 50 amot up in the sky, like very, 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 very high. Can you come down? Oh, this is an elbow or a thumb? 
No, I'm, I'm not as an elbow, darling. I never, I like no, it's very high. He says, elbow. and tomorrow night when you go to Queen Vash, Queen, sorry, Queen Esther's party, you'll see Mordechai dangling from the tree and you'll enjoy the party like completely. So, um, Haman is very happy with the when? suggestion. And he, <laughs> Jenny, this is interrupting the video. And he brings his Wait. sons to help him Wait. and children. The entire family was rotten to the core. Yeah. The girls come and they yeah. play musical instruments and there's dancing and festivity. And they, they, no, Stanley, darling, not to make me crazy. <laughs> okay, later, later. You know, we even say hi. <laughs> okay, but no more, okay? And, and he, he, um, Climbs to the top of the tree Whoa. and just for fun, he puts the noose wow. around his neck to see if it's a good fit, if it will fit well. It says at that point, a bat call, a heavenly okay, voice mama, rings mama, out mama, okay. and says, Haman, that's a perfect fit for you. Of course, he didn't hear it, but a bat call from heaven did say that. Ahash <laughs> Not now, not now. Mama, I heard it said that Rifki taught us and Sam saying that it did like the first one that he picked out. He said, the basketball called out and said, ha, 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 you think it's that day? They had all these wrong things. Like, right, that was when he drew, the, when he did the lottery. But yeah, no. so, Ahasuerus goes to sleep. And as soon as he falls asleep, he has a terrible um, dream. And in the dream, he dreams that Haman is trying to kill him. He, and it's not just a dream, it's literally a vision. And he, he sees Haman grabbing the crown off his head and putting it on his own head and coming toward him with a huge dagger and thrashing it into him, stabbing him and killing him. And Ahasuerus wakes up in a cold, in a cold sweat. And when he wakes up, he's so perturbed and he's so shaken up and he can't think he goes, what kind of a dream was that? But it didn't feel like a dream. It felt so real. And at that point, it says that actually the Malach came and literally shook him to the core. Shook him even physically. He felt...